Open up for new Westworld theories and strangle a pedo with your bare hands because we have some insane new theories this week including clues that point to who exactly is in Charlotte's body. So put on your favorite recording of You Are My Sunshine because here we go. We start with a flashback of human Charlotte Hale the night of the Westworld massacre. She uses a host to record a message, a message that we'll later find out is for her son Nathan. Nathan Hale also happens to be the name of an American spy during the revolution war, and his mother's name was Elizabeth Hale, which also happens to be Charlotte's middle name. This is Charlotte Elizabeth Hale. Hale was hung for being a spy, perhaps foreshadowing what might become of Charlotte later on in the season. The title of this episode, The Absence of Field, comes from a Mark Strand poem in which the narrator feels uncomfortable by his intrusion in the world, constantly moving so as to not disturb the world around him. In our case, Charlotte is this intruder. We're treated to shots of Charlotte's body being remade by by Dolores using the device found in Arnold's abandoned home. The question remains, who exactly is in her body? I'll get to that in a moment. Dolores needs host Charlotte to keep up the charade that she's still her human self, but they don't have much time. As we'll find out in a later scene, an inventory check of Westworld has found that there are some acids that have yet to be accounted for. It's only a matter of time before Delos realizes that some of these hosts could have made it out of the park. Dolores also shows Charlotte four of the five pearls smuggled out of Westworld. Notice Bernard's is the only one to have a red hue to it. Red being the color of the human host hybrids we saw in season two, hinting that Bernard is part host, part human. We've seen Bernard turn on and off these two sides. It's likely Dolores needs him because that human part, which is likely Arnold, contains some sort of data she needs. Last episode I theorized these scans are Rehoboam finding anomalies within the system, and here we have one showing elevated scrutiny before zoning in on Charlotte, the anomaly. It's picking up that something just isn't right about her. Westworld taking a nod from Michael Bay with this riot control transformer of which 300 have been ordered. These will undoubtedly be used by Dolores in her upcoming revolution. Charlotte is informed that someone has been buying vast amounts of Delo stock using a method called creeping tender, a business term for the gradual accumulation of a target company's shares with the intent of controlling it. We're back with Caleb after the event of episode 1. He's next to a wounded Dolores and joins her in the ambulance using his military skill set to give her oxygen and prepare a stem pack. After their analysis, the EMTs can't seem to figure out what's wrong with her. That's because she's not human at all. But before Caleb can find out Dolores' true nature, they're pulled over by the cops. But since Caleb has his Rico app, he knows these cops aren't really who they say they are. Dolores basically terminators the shit out of them and drives off, telling Caleb he better get a new name since he'll now be a wanted man. This is shown later on when he finds a hit has been put on him, and can we just take a moment that the option not to take the job is, no, I like being basic? Charlotte is front of Delos headquarters, which is actually the city of arts and sciences building in Spain. She's there literally clawing at her own skin, a metaphor for being trapped in someone else's body and wanting to get out. She gets her first distorted message here, which she'll get several of over the course of the episode. When played in order, they create the melody for You Are My Sunshine shine, the song she promised to sing to her son but never got to since she died in Westworld. Charlotte is informed that the mystery takeover is being done by Serac and that his entire existence has been scrubbed. The only thing they know is that he's worth a trillion dollars. We haven't yet seen human Serac, and I don't think we can count his conversation with Maeve since we aren't sure if that took place in reality at all. The other time we see him, he's a hologram, leading me to believe he might not be human at all, rather something created by Rehobo as a safety mechanism for its own self-preservation. It could even be the real Serac who was able to upload himself into Rehoboam years ago, being able to live forever. Charlotte returns home to find her ex-husband Jake pissed that she forgot about picking up Nathan. He seems to get over that rather quickly. She also says goodnight to Nathan, who makes a remark about elephants. Elephants are what William's daughter Emily loved while visiting Raj World. They're also what didn't arrive for Cersei and her army, and for those of you who have seen Watchmen, I'll just leave this here. Notice also the arrows on Nathan's pillows, the same arrows found in the opening credits, and we can tell that whoever's in this host is quite empathetic to a child not having a mother figure, hint hint. Back at Delos, Brompton informs Charlotte about the missing control units and that there's a mole high up in the company who is working for their mystery buyer, Serac. Of course, we'll find out this mole was in fact human 
Charlotte. Charlotte meets Dolores at an upscale bar wanting answers. She's been self-harming because of the pain of being in someone else's skin. As we'll later see, she cuts herself in these circular patterns, which look a lot like our Rehoboam circles. Charlotte doesn't get any answers from Dolores here, and it seems that Charlotte's identity is ramping up to be the big reveal of the season. So who exactly is it? The first theory is that it's someone she loves and trusts from Westworld, most likely Teddy or her father. We get this shot of Dolores cuddling Charlotte, which is similar to the one of her and Teddy, and we know that there is a loving history between the two. The problem with this theory, and any theory that it's someone from Westworld, is that it's just too obvious, and if this is going to be the big reveal, there's really no gut punch surprise in it. How would you feel if it was Teddy? You'd probably be like, oh, okay, and then just move on. It's not surprising. The second, more interesting theory is that Charlotte is a split between Wyatt and Dolores. Remember that Wyatt was the host created by Arnold that he merged with Dolores to massacre all the hosts in season one. If Dolores found a way to separate the two, she could be controlled by Wyatt and give Dolores to Charlotte, hence why that character is more sympathetic and caring while Dolores is a killing machine. Even in this shot, you can see the duality of the two characters, like a yin and yang with Dolores in black and Charlotte in white. The third and what I think is the most batshit crazy theory is that Charlotte is Caleb. And it's so crazy it just might be true. It fills two important criteria. One, it's surprising, and two, it would make us rethink the entire season and see it in a new light, just like the William is the Man in Black reveal in season one. Of course, in order for this theory to be true, it would have to result in some serious time fuckery, which at this point is almost impossible to plot out. However, there is some other evidence, like how the episode focused heavily on the relationship between mother and son, intertwined with the theme of abandonment, that point to Caleb as Charlotte. Nathan and Caleb both had mothers who abandoned them, which may be why Caleb, in Charlotte's body, cries when watching Charlotte's message to her son. It resonates with him. He also wants out of the body and cuts himself, something other hosts haven't really done. Not to mention Charlotte is overprotective of Nathan, killing the pedo with his bare hands. Whoever's in control of Charlotte has an urge to protect, whereas I think other hosts wouldn't be as inclined, or maybe not go to that extreme. Again, this is still super early, but I want to hear what you think in the comments below. Dolores basically tells Charlotte that they need to kill Serac and fend off his bid for Delos, and in order to stop that bid, they need to provide a counteroffer. In order to get that money, she'll need to visit, quote, an old friend. Now, the only person I know who has enough money to possibly counter this is the Man in Black, who we know from the trailers makes an appearance this season. Caleb goes to say goodbye to his mother, who suffers from schizophrenia. She doesn't know who he is, whether that's a result of the schizophrenia or something else, we aren't sure. Caleb's on the run since finding out that he's a wanted man, and is stopped by two men wanting to know the whereabouts of Dolores. He could easily give her up, but doesn't, as we'll later find out the reason behind this is that she's, quote, the first real thing that has happened to him in a long time, the irony being that she isn't real at all. Dolores asks Martin for info on Caleb, the man who saved her, and conveniently stumbles upon him being picked up by these two men, and Rehoboam calculating that his life expectancy will drop because of it. Caleb saved her, now it's time for her to return the favor. At the construction site where Caleb works, he's interrogated using a device called a drip, which is found on the roof of the mouth. He's turned his off, and it needs to be short-circuited in order for these men to control his heartbeat. George, Caleb's robotic co-worker, senses he's in danger and goes to help, but is pushed off the side. Caleb then experiences several flashbacks, like the ocean, where apparently he will commit suicide, the spilled milkshake from when his mother left him as a child, and this cryptic image of him and his military partner Francis in the middle of some sort of heist. We can tell this is Caleb because he's wearing this same jacket from his episode 1 flashback. I'm also getting the vibe, and maybe I'm just crazy, you let me know in the comments, that Caleb and Francis may have been romantically involved. It would give more weight and stakes to why he misses him, and if you believe the Charlotte is Caleb theory, it would explain why she's so quick to jump him. Jake kinda looks like Francis. Dolores saves Caleb and breaks him free, symbolically signifying the start of him breaking free of the system which has kept him down. They pass a building with the word collaboration in the back, which I found pretty fun since the two will collaborate together to bring down the system. In the diner where Caleb was abandoned, Dolores explains how she knows all about him via Rehoboam, a system which has created a mirror of the real world in order to predict the future and plot out the paths of every human on Earth. 
mirrors also happen to feature prominently in this episode, like the one Charlotte holds up to her or even the reflections of the thugs in the hospital. On the pier, Dolores explains that Rehoboam's algorithm has predicted Caleb's suicide 10 to 12 years in the future. In fact, Rehoboam is so all-encompassing in society that it has essentially blocked him into being a construction worker, unfit for advancement, or even having children. This likely played a factor in why he didn't get that job in episode 1. He has merely been programmed to live this life and can't do anything about it, just like how Dolores was programmed in the way she lived her life in Westworld. As Dolores says, they put you in a cage and decided what your life would be. She confides in him, telling him she's going to start a revolution and cut the cord of this exploitive system. What Caleb doesn't know is that she wants to destroy all of humanity. Charlotte uses the tones on her phone to call the number to Serac and arrange their meeting. The haunting violin piece that plays here in the background is called Doomed by Moses Sumney, perhaps another foreshadowing of what's to come for her character. Charlotte enters the guarded home and is greeted by Mantis, oops, I mean Martel, one of Serac's henchmen. She puts on these special glasses, hinting that Serac is indeed a hologram. We learn that human Charlotte was working for Serac and promised him Delos's dirty little secret, that Delos was creating profiles of all the park guests. This data was uploaded at the end of season two, but the person who holds the encryption key to it is Dolores, hence why Serac wants her. On its surface, it seems like Serac is wanting to stop Dolores to save humanity, but I can't help but think there is something else here, something more personal. In the episode 4 preview, turn away for about 20 seconds if you don't want to hear any of this, we see a young boy in a field overlooking what appears to be a nuclear bomb destroying a city. In the Westworld season announcement trailer, we see this indicator of a thermonuclear incident in Paris. Is the boy here Serac or perhaps his son? I can't help but think there's some connection here, but it seems we'll need to keep tuning in to get some answers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. You can also follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.